So in this video we're going to be covering chapter 3, section 3, which deals with counting atoms. And you may initially think that counting atoms is very simple. You just have a set number of atoms and you look at them and you count them. But the problem is atoms are so small that you cannot count them individually by any practical means. So chemists have to use other known properties such as the mass and they also use a separate unit that we'll learn about later called the mole to count the number of atoms present in a sample. So just to cover the basic vocab that we'll be discussing during chemistry, uh, if you look at a periodic table you'll notice that each element, let's say hydrogen, has a number above and some number below it. The number above it is what is known as the atomic number and that is the number of protons and because atoms are electrically neutral, also the number of electrons present in any given atom of hydrogen. And you'll notice, as you look at the table, that the elements are arranged by increasing atomic number. So, for example, you can move on and you'd see that helium is element number two and therefore has two protons and two electrons. Moving on, now we're going to be discussing isotopes. Now, while elements, let's say all elements of hydrogen, which is element number one, they all have this one proton, they do not necessarily have the same number of neutrons. For example, hydrogen can have zero neutrons, or one neutron, or two neutrons. And each of these are what are known as isotopes of hydrogen. That is, they have the same element, they have the same number of protons, but a different mass. And this mass is caused by the additional mass of these neutrons. Now each of these isotopes also has a name. For example, if you have, well they each have the one proton, right? But if you have, let's say, no neutrons, you have what is known as protium or hydrogen one. If you have one neutron, you have what is known as deuterium, because du, two, that is known as hydrogen two. And if you artificially create some with two neutrons, you have what is known as tritium. And most of the time, you won't refer to isotopes specifically by name like you can with hydrogen, Usually you'll refer to them as, you know, hydrogen one, that is the mass number, because there's one uh, nucleon in the nucleus. Whereas with deuterium, you would be referring to hydrogen two, because there's two uh, nuclear particles in total, that is the neutron and the proton. Now the mass number of an isotope is simply the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, because for all intents and purposes, these weigh roughly the same, what is known as one atomic mass unit, with a little bit of you know, some decimal variation way down the line. So for example, protium, which has just the one proton, would have a mass number of one, whereas deuterium, which has the proton plus the extra neutron, would have you know one proton plus one neutron would give it a mass number of two. So there are two main ways of designating the differences between isotopes and the first of those is what is known as hyphen notation. Now for example if you were to have deuterium that we showed earlier with the one proton and the one neutron which has a mass number of two, all you would do is write the element, in this case hydrogen, put a hyphen, and then clarify the mass number, in this case, two. So deuterium, right here, is also known as hydrogen two. Or, if you want to get a bit more complex, you could use nuclear fuel, such as uranium 235. That is, it has a mass number of 235. 235 total neutrons and protons. Alternately, you could use each isotope's nuclear symbol. Now the nuclear symbol uses the standard symbol for the element. 
In the case of deuterium, it's hydrogen, so you'd write the H that you can find in the box on the periodic table. Then you put the mass number at the top of the symbol and the element number at the bottom. So this indicates that it has one proton, but two, a mass number of two. And therefore, if you subtract the number of protons, which are down here, from the mass number, you can get the number of neutrons down here, in this case, one. And the same thing you could do with uranium, which has the symbol U and 235 mass number, as we have listed over here. Now, uranium is element 92. I'll save that so you don't have to look it up. But when you subtract, you can find that uranium has a total of 143 neutrons, just by knowing the element's mass number and its atomic number. Now, because the masses of individual atoms are minuscule, they're something like 10 to the negative 23 grams, chemists have decided to use a relative system for measuring atomic mass. That is, they choose one atom, in this case, carbon-12, as the standard to set the atomic mass unit, or AMU. What this means is that internationally, chemists have decided that the isotope carbon-12 has a mass of exactly 12 atomic mass units, and all other isotopes are measured relative to this. For example, oxygen-16 has a mass of roughly 16 atomic mass units, because carbon-12 is composed of the six protons and the six neutrons. A proton and a neutron weigh roughly one atomic mass unit. So you can see in oxygen-16, which has eight protons and eight neutrons, you'll get a total of roughly 16 atomic mass units. And this is true for all elements. Now in case you were curious, while the proton and neutron each weigh about one AMU to within about a hundredth of an atomic mass unit, an electron has a mass of about one two thousandth of an atomic mass unit. So electrons are almost massless. So as I mentioned earlier, most elements, even in their pure form in nature, are composed of a mixture of different isotopes of that element. So when you calculate the average atomic mass of an elephant, of an element rather, you have to take into account the various isotopes that go into that sample of the element. Now these average atomic masses tend to be what are known as weighted averages. Now that means they take account both the abundance of a certain isotope and the mass of that certain isotope when calculating this average atomic mass. So for example, if you were to calculate the average atomic mass of, let's say, copper, well, copper is 69.15% uh, copper 63 in nature, whereas it is 30.85%, that is the rest, is copper 65. So when calculating the average, you have to take into account both the different masses, the 63 and the 65, as well as the abundance. That is, there's going to be a heavier weight towards the copper 63 than there will be towards the copper 65 when you calculate the average. And the easiest way to do this is by converting these percentages into decimals. So first, you would take the 0.6915, the converted percentage, and multiply by the atomic mass of the copper 63, which is 62.93 AMU. And then you would add that to the relative abundance of the copper 65. In this case, that would be 0 0.3085 times the atomic mass of copper 65, which is 64.93 atomic mass units. And then, once you do the actual calculation and add both those products up, you get a final average atomic mass of 63.55 AMU. And if you were to look up copper on the periodic table and look below the chemical symbol, 
you would see 63.55 listed. And that's because the average atomic mass is listed underneath the symbol on the periodic table.